Good evening gardening friends. We've got another little project going on here. We've got another board and conveniently this shelf that I finished up is the right length to kind of set this up. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually build a bird feeder. Now I'm going to kind of pan along here and hopefully you can see that I've got everything kind of marked out already. Um, I'm going to guess, I think I'll just give you the dimensions in a couple of screens at the end of the video if you want to try and copy exactly what I'm doing but I'm going to try and give you sort of the principle behind how I designed it and figured out the measurements. Um, so with that I'm going to go ahead and actually cut these pieces and then we can start assembly. This may actually take me a couple of days because it's late on Thursday and uh, or late afternoon on Thursday and who knows what it's going to uh, interrupt me in the next couple of days, but uh, we'll get it done. Okay, folks, there you go. I'm almost completely done with uh, cutting. We've got the gable ends, we've got the sides, we've got the roof, and we've got the base. Um, there will be a little bit more wood involved and actually some plastic, um, but I'll explain as I go along. So, while this is mainly a project done from one plank, there's a few extra little bits. Um, I suppose you could leave it with the one plank, um, but there's a couple of problems with that, which I'll explain as I come up, as I go along. I did want to show you that since I'm not 100% finished cutting, this is the gable end, and if you look carefully, you can probably see those pencil lines that I have on there. Basically, what I wanted to show you is since this is dog-eared board with the two ears on it. Um, let me actually do it more like that so you can see it a little bit better. The dog ears. Uh, I basically figured this is probably the logical place to cut one of the gable ends because the peak comes right up into the middle. Now if you want to figure out how to cut a gable end, basically I got to tell you this is probably about the best four dollars I've ever spent was a speed square. Plastic speed square. Doesn't have to be real fancy. Sometimes you can even find them at the 99 cent store. I just happened to need one and didn't find one at any of the 90, 99 cent or dollar stores that I go to. But anyway, what's nice about a speed square is it's got the 45 already built in there. So, I mean, sort of, well, yeah, maybe, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but that's a 45 degree angle. And so, if you really want to do the gable end, probably the simplest thing in the world you can do is you just find the midpoint at the top here, and you line up, let's see if I can get this oriented right, you line up your square, and you just, you push up like this, sorry, I'm getting out of frame here, let me do that again. You push up like this until this part of this, the square actually meets up with that center point. That will give you 45 coming down. And as it turns out, if you're trying to do the calculations, 45 degrees is going to give you, uh, in the vertical height going this way, exactly half the width side to side of that board. So you can do the calculation just by finding this width, cutting that in half, and figuring that that's how big this triangle is going to be vertically. And then for this measurement I just simply did that plus the width of the board coming down plus I also included the thickness of the board into that calculation which will be apparent as we get to that particular part. Okay, so the gable ends are now cut to them. Uh, it was a little difficult, uh, it kind of fought me. If you get a power saw, a circular saw, or a table saw, it's probably not going to be an issue at all. <laughs> but with a hand saw, just cutting across the grain that way, it was a little hard. Um, plus the fact that I'd already cut them short and just trying to hold them on the table here, I need like a non-slip pad or something that I can uh, put on here if I'm going to use this like a table. All right, folks, here's my first mistake. Uh, the length of this side here, you come out a little bit there, is supposed to be, uh, let's see if I can sort of move that over there, it's supposed to be equal to this, let's see, when you get below the gable, it's supposed to be the entire width of this board plus two other measurements. Uh, one actually should be at the top, and that measurement would be 
Let me do it this way to sort of demonstrate. If I line this up right at the edge of that gable, then that is the amount of space I need to actually leave between the bottom of the gable and the top of this side piece. Um, if I do that, what ends up happening is it lines up at the bottom. That was my mistake because the side pieces, if you can think of this, let me see if I can set this up. This is a gable over there, and this will be the side piece going against the gable. What I actually wanted was to have the side piece raised up just a hair so that when we have the bird seed in there, it'll actually be able to spill out and the birds will be able to eat it from there. Well, I forgot that dimension when I was calculating the length of all of these things, so I'm going to have to fudge this a little bit, and I'll get back to you when I figure out exactly what I'm going to do to fudge it. All right, folks, after a bit of work trying to puzzle this out, here's what I've come up with. Turns out there were two flaws in my design, and uh, or two flaws in sort of my understanding of what I was doing, but they actually worked together. It's, you know, a good thing. Um, instead of actually laying the side piece on like this, it's actually going to go on like that. And for, for that reason, we don't have to worry so much about this is going to be the top, Oh, this is really kind of hard to let's see if I can set that up a little better. All right, painter's tape to the rescue. Um, so this is, if we look at the, remember this is not actually supposed to be a bird house, it's a bird feeder that looks like a house. But if we look at it from this side, you can see that the side piece comes all the way down to the table. Okay, now there's actually going to be two more pieces. Um, well, there's going to be two more pieces that are going to sit underneath this to form a platform but this is sort of the house part of it. Um, and the problem I ran into is, if you look underneath, you can kind of see there's a little gap in there. Well, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that gap, and that gap's gonna come up a little higher. And that's gonna leave some room. Now, I just stuck a board under there to, to show you the gap at the bottom. That gap at the bottom is set up there Sorry, the phone started going a little crazy. So I was trying to point out that I've got this board here that's just kind of wedged in there to force there to be a gap. But then when you look up above, there's not as much of a gap up above. So that was kind of where I screwed up. If I actually ran the side piece to the outside of the gable, then I would have had to consider adding a little extra right up in this corner here so that the roof would actually fit on there. Because if you think about it, the board has some thickness that comes up underneath. Well, as it turns out, um, I forgot. I actually included that measurement, but forgot the measurement for the gap down below. Well, as it turns out now, if I just simply push this all the way to the top, that'll leave a gap at the bottom where the seed can spill out. Now, the one thing I've just realized about this whole design is this. Now I'm gonna try and carefully remove my roof. Oops, I forgot that there's actually an overhang to the roof sort of do that a little bit so you can see there's a little bit of an overhang and that should be about equal on both sides. I calculated that in but now I'm just going to go ahead and remove the roof and you can see there is quite a bit of space in there so uh, like this in Jaws I think we're going to need a bigger boat well I think we're going to need a bit more seed so um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up probably tomorrow uh, but when I do finish it up, I'll show you how I'm actually going to fill it with seed. Because keep in mind, we've got this roof, which is now becoming kind of cockeyed. But if you look at it for a second, you think about that roof, and you think that there's a platform under, underneath this whole thing, how in the world do you get the seed in? I'll answer that question tomorrow when I decide to add a little something. Okay, folks, it's now Friday the 25th at a little before 6. I'm probably going to work on this until about six o'clock and then call it quits for the night but just wanted to show you what I've kind of been doing. I've taken the individual pieces and sanded them. I've kind of dulled all the corners and everything and that's actually it's got kind of a nice effect. Um, and then what I also did was I took a rag and just kind of wiped it down. Just well you get the idea. I wiped it down to get all the dust from sanding off of it and then I took that and I took all the exposed ends I don't know how well this is going to translate. Took all the exposed ends and wiped them with the same rag so that it actually put some of the stain back on the exposed ends. So, actually this end you're not going to see because it's one of the gable ends. But uh, it may do something for 
Actually, now that I think of it, you're not going to see that end either because there's uh, more wood involved. But uh, I know. Let's go with the. Uh, yeah, it's going to be the roof that where you're going to see it. So the roof will be hanging kind of like that, and then you just see that on the end. So it's not quite so stark and a, um, a contrast between the the sides themselves and the ends. And okay, that damage is going to go to the inside of the roof, um, so you don't end up seeing it. But anyway. That's kind of where that is, and I'm going to see about starting to assemble it. Okay, it's about quitting time. This did uh, fight me along the way, but uh, I have not nailed on the bottom. It's, everything's nailed together but the bottom. So there you can see I've got a big old cavity to put things in, and actually a little bit of air up at the top there. But um, And then you can actually see it'll breathe underneath. That was unintentional. That's just sort of a feature, if you will. So at least we know that the, uh, <laughs> if this was an attic, we know the attic would breathe. Um, you can see it's kind of, the, the joints aren't all perfect. The measurements were not perfect. The cuts were not perfect. This is the kind of project where it really starts to count. Um, you can see that even the, the two roof pieces, while it's flush on the back here, on the front, it's not flush because these two pieces were not the same length. <laughs> Um, I did measure them correctly, but uh, at least I'm pretty sure I measured them correctly. So I'm just going to have to be more straight with my cuts, or maybe I'll just drag a piece over to my parents' place and use the uh, power saws. Because everything else on the uh, patio here is hand cut, but um, maybe we're getting into the need for precision cuts. Anyway, so that's what it looks like along there. Um, this, well, I'll show you one other. Uh, there were some other miscalculations like that nail sticking through. Um, so I'm going to call that the back side of this. Even though it's more flush right here on the roof, I just don't want to be looking at the nail. So as far as the front side, um, there's a reason why I'm going to call one part a front. I'm actually going to put some holes in here and create windows. Um, if I was a real woodworker, they'd be square holes for windows. In this case, they're going to be round because I can just use a paddle bit to cut them. And I'll put a piece of glass behind them. And when I fill it with seed, then I'll be able to see how much seed is left in the feeder. Um, ultimately, then, the uh, around the edge here, I'm going to use some of the remaining uh, strapping uh, wood that I have, which is like one by one and a half, something like that, to create sort of like a um, a railing around it, which will also hold in any seed that pours out. Now, actually, I'll show you down below. There's an intentional gap here. That's not a mistake. That's actually intentional. That'll allow the seed to spill out. And finally, uh, I realized today with the, because uh, I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this, I bought a 4x6 uh, picture frame and a 5x7 picture frame at a dollar store and uh, the glass for the 4x6 will fit beautifully right in here going up and down and because I realized just how big this cavity is in here let me just sort of turn it on its roof um, that's a rather large cavity for storing bird seeds so what I'm actually gonna what I'm seriously considering is that I'm going to subdivide it the lengthwise uh, and put two different kinds of seed in because there's the gap there's a gap on the bottom on that side and, sorry about that, there's a gap on the bottom on the other side. So in both cases it'll actually let seed out. Uh, who knows, I might get different kinds of birds uh, depending on which side they're looking at. And as far as the front, where I put the holes, um, I may just put holes down the left and holes down the right so I can see the levels of both kinds of seed. So this is kind of where my thinking is. Uh, but I guess I'll pick up later uh, when I start to install the, uh, when I start to show you how I actually plan to fill it with seed, even though I'm a nail on a bottom, so it's going to be pretty much a sealed vessel, it would be rather difficult to just turn it on its side with the base and trying to get the seed through that little slot. So I have another idea for how I'm going to do that. So we'll pick up there.